one inch of pure white chocolate, Jeremy Carr! Right. So I'm originally from Augusta, Georgia. Hometown of James Brown, Godfather of Soul, the Masters Golf Tournament, and sweet southern condescension. <laughs> you know, it's that way that older southern women speak to you that sounds real sweet at first, but actually they're insulting you. For example, for future reference, means you did it wrong. <laughs> Just so you know, means don't be an idiot. And my personal favorite, that's how we do things here. Which means you don't belong. Now, as a child that never fit into sweet southern society, and I sure as heck don't now as an adult, but my kids are part of a preschool run by a sweet southern woman named Miss Georgina. <laughs> now, Miss Georgina has certain ways of doing things, and she has assignment folders she requires for homework for preschoolers. And I often forget to bring my kids' folders from home, and I take them to preschool, and I'm dropping them off in the class, and Miss Georgina is standing there. Mr. Carr, did you remember to bring your kids folders? Uh, no, no, uh, no ma'am, I didn't. They really need their folders every day. Uh, yes ma'am, I'm aware of that. Have you checked their backpacks? <laughs> Maybe they're in the backpacks. I've checked! <laughs> For future reference, Jeremy, please be sure to bring their folders every day. Just so you know, it's how we do things here. <laughs> so, we've been visiting the church that's affiliated with the preschool, and they have this uh, computer kiosk where you can check your kids in to take them to their uh, class at church. And it's an old computer, it has this old school clicky mouse, and a keyboard, a big monitor, and a label printer, all on this tiny little ledge. So we're at church, and I'm fumbling around trying to check my four kids in, and this man behind me says, oh, Yeah, there's not a lot of room for that mouse up there, is there? Yeah. I reply, Nope, you know, I haven't used one of these things since the fourth grade. And then I hear the voice. You know, it's also a touch screen. <laughs> Shocking. Finally, some technology I can get behind. Well, it's been like that for the last ten years. Well, then why is there an old school mouse if it's so unnecessary, huh? To mess with people like you. <laughs> Do you always have large, obsolete technology on tiny little spaces? Well, your head is on your neck now, isn't it? <laughs> well, why not just put a typewriter up there, or a telegraph machine, or an old-school printing press? For future reference, <laughs> we prefer you use the touch screen. <laughs> Just so you know, it's how we do things here. <laughs> I once worked at a church with a guy who uh, could not speak like directly to me at all. He could never take ownership of what he did. He could never come up and say, well, I, I did this, I didn't do that. But he would always talk in this passive tone. And one day he called me into his office to review a project we'd been working on together that he was not happy with mainly from his own neglect. And he sat me down. He says, Jeremy, mistakes were made. Bridges were burned. Balls were dropped. <laughs> Could you imagine talking like that in any other context? I mean, imagine picking up your kid from daycare. How was your day today, son? 
Well, Dad, snacks were eaten, <laughs> naps were taken, pants were pooped in. <laughs> or on your wedding day, I'm sure your spouse would really appreciate the thoughtful, romantic, poetic love and adoration so summed up in the phrases, rings were exchanged. <laughs> Kisses were given. <laughs> Love will be made. <laughs> yeah, that job sucked, so I quit. <laughs> but at least money was made. <laughs> Bills were paid. <laughs> and Miss Georgina's folders were purchased. <laughs> yeah. So, the older I get, the more hygienic tools I need to get by. Anyone with me on that? <laughs> I've Invisalign braces, an electric toothbrush, nose hair trimmers. And I'm at the age now that I can totally rock the five o'clock shadow on my back. <laughs> this summer I was particularly hairy and my children were embarrassed. My wife was tired of shaving my back for me every day, so I purchased a man groomer. You know what a man groomer is, right? It's an electric shaver at the end of this extendable telescopic wand so that you can shave your own back. Huh. And it works, and it's awesome. And I recently purchased a few, and I gave one as a gift to my mother-in-law. <laughs> Chewbacca was not happy about that. I think she uses a straight razor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, my wife uh, was pissed. But that's when I discovered that you can't be angry while using a bidet. <laughs> You know what a bidet is, right? It's that French invention that sprays water up your backside if you use the toilet. Yeah, well, the one I bought was from an Australian company called Bidet, mate! <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the fancy French one at all. It was this awkward do-it-yourself installation, and I had a time installing it. I'm not handy. The first time I installed it, I hooked up the water pressure, was way too high, and it sprayed water all the way up to the ceiling. I thought I fixed it the first time I used it. I accidentally hooked it up to the hot water, and I uh, burned me wallabies. <laughs> but I finally got it working, and my wife loves it. I mean, not just after she uses the toilet. She loves to relax in there. <laughs> Uh, honey, everything okay in there? Crikey! Just taking a walk about the Outback. Crikey, Kyle. Yeah. Sure, our uh, water, our toilet paper costs have gone down for sure, but our our water bill has gone to shit. But it's worth it for a happy marriage. Just ask my wife and she'll tell you. For future reference, <laughs> buy a bidet. Just so you know, it's how we do things here. <laughs> Thank you guys, I'm Jeremy Mark. <laughs>